Hey guys, I'm sitting here with my friend Zach today, and I'm going to be asking him some questions about what it's like to come to Japan and be an entrepreneur. So if you want to hear more about that, then keep on listening. So hey everybody, here I am today with Zach. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> and we are basically going to talk about his experience in Japan and what it's like to live here as a foreigner. So Zach, mm -hmm. can you tell us what brought you to Japan? I've been interested in Japan for a long time, I think since second grade of elementary school. Uh, it started with Pokemon and kind of went from there to video games to anime to like, okay, this is what Japanese culture is on, you know, pop culture, but what is really Japanese culture? And that was kind of like my impetus to kind of study more about Japan yeah. and, you know, read up about the culture and the society and traditional stuff and, you know, it kind of really made me want to come here. So the summer of my freshman year of college, when I was at Arizona State, I went to Jochi, uh, Sophia University, for a summer program. Wait, you went to Jochi? Yeah, for, I, yeah, I went there for a summer program. I went to Jochi. I saw that in your Facebook. <laughs> oh, we went to the same college. Yep. Okay. So I went yeah. there for a summer study program, and I loved it so much, I inquired about transferring there, and then in 2013, March, I transferred to Sophia, and then I graduated in 2015, so. Yeah, so were you planning to go back home, and it just kind of didn't happen? Originally, or? yes, but um, after a while, I was like, you know, I'm not really done here yet, so that's what kind of made me want to stay here. So you didn't have any hesitations about being here for as long as you have been? No, not at all. And I think mm -hmm. the, the toughest part about it was just like, you know, just being away from my family. But I mean, I lived in Arizona, but my family was in Ohio, so they're, they're already kind of far away to begin with. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so tell everybody, mm -hmm. what is a typical day like for you here in Tokyo? Um, you know, it really depends on the day of the week because, you know, my, you know, I run this studio here. Um, so if I have a studio booking in the morning, I have to get up and prepare and get here early enough to set up everything. But uh, if I don't have much going on in the morning, then I'm awake around 9 o'clock and I, you know, take my time getting ready, get here at 10, do all my clerical stuff for my company. And then in the afternoon, it's either meetings, studio work, or filming stuff for my YouTube channel. And then I, I always like to go out during the evening, to, you know, to some something nice to eat, but... You know we just that? heard a big boom. <laughs> I think someone was dropping stuff down upstairs. Yeah. But like at you know at night it really depends on my mood if I'm gonna go out or just cook. But you know it's it's a very standard like life even though I run my own company. Here. Yeah. Oh wait. So tell us about that. Like, what is it like to run your own business in Japan? Right. Yeah. It's it's very interesting because you know, my clientele is a mix of Japanese clientele and uh, I mean, a foreign clientele. And it's a it's a tightrope walk, you know, trying to make sure I you know satisfy both groups of clients, right? I, I want to make sure that I'm not too informal with the Japanese clientele, but at the same time I'm you know very straightforward and very honest with the foreign clientele because they you know they want to get stuff done quickly, whereas with Japanese clientele they you know it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, the business culture yeah. is just so different here that you got to be really sensitive, right? And how you're talking to people. I yeah. think that's one of the reasons why I've stayed here for so long is because you know learning about this while I'm running my own business is just fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah, I felt the same way. Like after coming to you for university yeah. and working a bit, I was like, no, I gotta really challenge this because you spend so much time learning about the culture that it's right. like, okay, I gotta get involved and kind of yeah, you put try it, in, it out and put, put it, it into, into practice. action. Yeah, yeah. put it into practice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so when did you accept that Tokyo is your home, or have you? Like, have I you had that moment where you're just like, this is my home, this is where I'm going to be? Like, I feel like I would like to move to Osaka, or like the Shonan beaches, or even back to, you know, Arizona, or even Hawaii, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't see myself moving away from here permanently. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's been the case since I started my company, so for the last two years, basically, it's... You know, Tokyo is where I've made my livelihood, where most of my friends are, and, you know, if, if I can, I'll, I want to live concurrently between Tokyo and, you know, America somewhere, right? Yeah. But, you know, for now, this is, this, is where, uh, this is where I'm living and working. <laughs> yeah, so have you ever had any, like, worries about the fact that you actually want to live here for a long time? Yeah, I think the problem is, it's like, Tokyo is an expensive city to live in, and... I don't like spending a lot of money, <laughs> and that's that's one of the main worries. It's like if I know if I move to Osaka or if I move to other parts of Japan, I'll be saving a lot of money, but at the same time, it's like I'd be sacrificing a lot that I have here, yeah. and that's one of the things that you know that was one of the biggest worries that I had when I moved here was like I sacrificed. I was in a band when I was in Arizona. I had a lot of friends there. 
I, I left all that behind to come here. And, you know, that's, it was a tough sacrifice. And, you know, I'm worried that if I make another sacrifice to go somewhere else, you know, I'll be making the wrong decision. Yeah, you kind of have to start up all over again. Right, yeah. But you know what, honestly, I kind of find that that's the case in Tokyo anyway. Because right. Because sometimes you meet people who are going to leave within a year. Yeah, that's, anyway, that was so. the thing I ran into last yeah. year. So many of my friends left last year, and it was like right. a whole reset period for me. Yeah. And it was kind of a you know time for me to like, oh, do I need all these friends, or do I just need the good friends who are going to be here permanently? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I'm still thinking about that one myself. It's, it's a tough question to ask yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would you say has been your biggest challenge being a foreigner here in Japan? Um, honestly, like the like the biggest challenge, you know, of, of being a foreigner here is just making and maintaining friends who are not foreigners. So, like Japanese friends, um, a lot of times I, I end up running along with friends who are just who are already used to foreigners or who've lived abroad or have experience working with you know, multicultural backgrounds and stuff like that. So Japanese people who are very, uh, the word in Japanese is Junjapa, which means like pure Japanese, like they haven't had that much exposure to foreign culture. Making and maintaining friendships with them is the biggest challenge that I've faced. I mean, obviously, you know, finding an apartment and getting a bank account and all that sort of stuff set up is, it's, it's a challenge, but it's a, it's a challenge that lasts just a little bit until you get that, you know, you, you achieve that goal, but it's like, just the maintaining of friendships here yeah. is just, I don't know how people do it. <laughs> That's true. I actually, there's this one girl I've known since I arrived here in 2009, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, we have had a continued relationship ever since I met her, but I right. still don't totally feel like I know her. Right, yeah, because a lot of times yeah. people here kind of keep themselves in a bubble. Or they keep yeah. themselves, even amongst their friends, they kind of, they don't really express themselves that much. That's true. And also, a lot of the language is yeah. pretty common between any person you meet. So, right. some of the reactions, like if I'm telling her about my day, she'd be like, oh, so nanda. Yeah, day, and that, it either drives you the wrong way or you just like, yeah. you know what to expect from them. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you're just like, okay, are you agreeing with me? Or are you thinking something <laughs> different and you're just not saying it? I'm not yeah. really sure. So, I think... Yeah, it's it's true in that trying to get really personal with somebody here right. does take quite a long time, I would say. Right. But I will also say though that once you do make a bond, yes, yeah. it's, it's pretty it's strong. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Unless you do something to really screw it up with them, it's it's permanent. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so tell us about some of the activities that you like to do that really enhance your Japan experience. So you're talking about things like gaming and other things that you're really into before you right, came here. Right, but that's, yeah. you know, that sort of stuff isn't really necessarily a part of what my life in Japan. I mean, I play video games and stuff like that, but it's not like, yeah. you know, it's, okay, I'll go home and play some GTA or whatever for an hour and then I'll go outside. One of my biggest things is I, I just love being outdoors. And um, if there's like a festival or a fireworks show or some sort of event going on somewhere outdoors, I will, I will definitely be there because, yeah. you know, I just, I, I hate being inside all day. And I, you know, I think that really, um, you know, participation in cultural events here in Japan is something that really, really strikes me as important, not just for me, but for anybody really who's yeah. coming here or who's living here. They get to kind of understand how the culture works in practice. And also, like, they have something that you can do every single season. Right, so yeah. So it's not like winter comes and everybody's indoors. It's like right. there's always something happening. You can go to an onsen outside mm -hmm. and, like, do some type of uh, cultural experience that's, yeah, taking place outside, maybe yeah. outside of Tokyo. And then also in Tokyo, there's just so many festivals that happen just literally all year yeah. round. And yeah. it's important for me because, you know, I kind of, it, those are the times when you see Japanese people get out of their bubble. And yeah. they, they kind of express themselves more. and. It's always really refreshing to yeah. see that. Okay, so do you have any advice for people who are thinking of living here or who have maybe just recently arrived and are trying to integrate themselves a bit more? Yeah, um, my main advice is to just get out there. You know, go to different events and stuff. Go to different parties. Um, you know, do, do a little bit of research before you go to these events. But, like, I've met so many people just from going out there and even if I was like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna go, 
Yeah. I, I never really regret it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah, I would say if you just give yourself a little push, it's all there's always yep. something interesting. My friends back home, they're always like, How do you have so many stories of like, <laughs> like the weirdest things happening? Oh yeah. To you? And I'm like, you could just be walking down the street and you'll see something really strange and that will just add to your yep. experience. So yep. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so what kind of resources or organizations um, have you found really essential for your quality of life here? You know, this is recent for me since I started my own business, but a lot of Facebook groups like uh, the Tokyo Expat Network, um, the Tokyo Business Networks and stuff like that, uh, Japan-based filmmakers, all these different Facebook groups have been super beneficial for me because, yeah. you know, I learn from them, they learn from me. You know, it's a lot of different networking events and different networking opportunities. And, you know, people have questions, they put them on those uh, group pages and people answer those. And, you know, I learned from those. I learned just so much from those Facebook pages. And, you know, I've been here for five years and I didn't really participate those in, in those until recently. <laughs> I actually didn't even know that they existed until probably just two years ago. I yeah. Think. And I was amazed. I was like, this was here the whole time. And right, I yeah. It was there. Facebook groups yeah. have gotten really good in the last two or three years. Absolutely. Like, they've been really, really good. Yeah, and you'll meet people in those groups who have been here for only, like, some people who haven't even moved yet yeah. who are looking for resources, but also people who have been here for, like, over 20 years Yeah, are in those groups. So there's, it's, yeah, lots of resources. I really, I really recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So is there anything else that you want to tell people before we right. start? Um, well, this is, uh, my, we're filming this in my studio. You see, we got my green screen here. We got a couple lights set up here. <laughs> she was like, is this too much of a, of a professional setup? But, you know, this is what I do here. Um, people come by and they want to film stuff here. They want to uh, rent it for an event or something like that. So this is basically called the Ginza Hub, and it yep. is a co-working space that's located in Ginza, yep. of course. Yep, co-working space is upstairs, yeah. and the studio is right here. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to come uh, do some filming, he has plenty of different yep. setups that you can try, uh, different lighting fixtures as well. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's a great resource for people who want to do film or people who want to ask him for film help. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, we actually have a separate uh, website for the studio, so instead of yeah. uh, ginzahub.com is a co-working space upstairs, and then right here, GinzaStudio.com for the studio. So if you want more information, go ahead and check out that in there. Yeah. So how can people actually connect with you personally? Like, is there any social media they connect with? Right, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm always on Twitter. So uh, Twitter and Instagram are my main social media things. Aside from, I mean, I have a YouTube channel as well. So my, and all three of them have the same URL. So YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, it's slash PHX787. So, easy way to remember that PHX is in Phoenix, and then 787 is an airplane, <laughs> the Boeing Dreamliner airplane. So, that's how you can get into contact with me. So, I'm always on all three of those platforms. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. So, if you really liked listening to what Zach had to say, make sure you check out his social media platforms. And Zach, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs>